41 to advance. And uh, what do you look for here? Keith, as we said before, I think this one's a toss-up. Uh, of course, both teams are going to have to come and, and play the way they are capable of doing, and I hope that that happens, because if it happens, this could be anybody's game right down to the wire. Another one of those, those situations where we're having the rubber match in the tournament because they split on the season. Central Rustic has the ball, and Shaw with it. Story Shaw to uh, Erica Shaw. Central Rustic in the dark uniforms, blue uniforms. Clark shot is up and off. Shaw picks it up, gives it back to Clark, goes right back in, puts it up and off. Rebound this time to Southern Rustic. Holly Brown and Jill Matters brings it down court. Eastern Main D final just underway. We're going to see a battle on the boards with uh, Brown and Walker trying to do the job. This is what Walker with the ball here. They're going to be trying to do the job against Clark and Bradstreet. And uh, both teams looking like they've got uh, a few jitters right now. <laughs> I out some of the bugs here early in the ball game. But the battle on the board will be important. The other thing is Coach Bradstreet was saying uh, they're going to have to hit their shots early, and they were able to do that in the semifinal game. Angela Allen came up with a big game in the outside shooting and hit some key shots early. Angela Allen with the ball, putting the shot up, rebound to Corny of the Warriors of Southern Rustic. The Warriors of Southern Rustic against the Panthers of Central Rustic. Joe Mathers inside. Been around. Walker. Nice pass. Underneath the crowd. Good combination that time. Finding Brown along for the layup. And Southern Rustic gets on the scoreboard first. And a foul at the foul line. Walker on uh, Clark. That's going to be Clark's first, uh, excuse me, Walker's first, team second. Kyle Webb and uh, Butch Hall, the officials for this afternoon's first game. In it comes, Bradstreet puts it up and goes in. We're tied at two. Nice job coming off that screen. Bradstreet takes the ball to the glass. Mathers coming down with it for Southern Aristic, going over on the right side now. 626 remaining the first period. Mathers takes an extra dribble. A double dribble turns it over. She was going to go up that time, but Melanie Clark uh, she presents quite an obstacle there on the inside, and Mathis got tangled up and had to put the ball to the floor again, double dribble. Angela Allen in the corner looking long, can't get a shot away, comes back out to uh, Bradstreet. Now to Shaw for the long one. Three. That's the three, they're giving a three on that one, it's five to two. Right near the line, went up before the line. Mathis comes back the other way. Then underneath, jump shot by Mathers. Good, down to four. Anybody that's been watching this Class D uh, tournament, they're going to see some familiar names from over the years. Mathers been here a while, along with the Shaws out front for Central Aroostook. So a lot of tournament experience on the floor right now, Keith. Mathers is really an all-star performer. 15 points in the opening game, uh, 16 in the semifinal, and to help lead her team into the state final last year, and a game in which uh, Southern Rustic won. They are the defending state champions, defeating Rangers 52 49 last year. Eric Shaw with it now for the Panthers, guarded by Joe Mathers. Allen back out to Shaw. Erica Shaw and Story Shaw. Erica number 14, now Story Shaw has it. 5 4 game, working the ball around, looking for the uh, inside shooter, Chris Bradstreet. Partially blocked. Walker with a rebound, and this is Mathers. 5 0 7 left to go in the first period, a 5 4 game. Mathers returned deep down by a point, shot by Brown. Mathers gathers it in, goes right back in along the baseline, bounces over to Brown. Brown spins around, the shot is blocked by Clark, and the foul being held on Bellamy Clark. Referee Butch Hall there with the call. Maybe we'll get another look at that as uh, Clark's coming out for the ball, looking for the block here, and got her on the wrist. So Jody Brown, the 5'9 uh, sophomore for Southern Aroostook, been a contributor for a sophomore in this Eastern Maine tournament. Go, 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 go. 
Brown misses both, and Clark gets the rebound. 4.45, and Curry number one. Angela Allen, who can shoot the long one. Clark moves in, puts it up and in. Nice job by Clark that time. You can really see how she's improved this season. Uh, she squares up much better to the basket, gathered herself that time, and took the good shot. Three-point lead now for the Panthers. Brown up and Left in. Left-handed. High off the glass that time. It really was. One-point lead now for Central Aristic over Southern Aristic. Oh, that's going to be a foul on Walker, picking up her second foul. Again, uh, remember in the opening comments of Julie Bradstreet, they wanted to see if they could get some foul trouble on the inside game of the Warriors. And Walker picks up her second foul here with 4.14 to go in the first period. Three team fouls on Southern Rustic and one on Central. Inside, Allen puts it up and draws the foul from Brown. That's going to be the fourth team foul. Brown's first, and we're going to have a quick timeout here by Southern Aroostook. Southern Aroostook is down by one point right now, but I'm sure that Coach Tom Berry concerned about the foul situation. Boy, they really do look pretty even at this point, don't they? They've got, you know, they both have teams have the outside shooting and the inside shooting. Take a look at Angela Allen going along the baseline. Brown comes over and called with a blocking foul. Southern Aroostook cheerleaders. Uh, on the court during this timeout, a one-point game coming up after this one, the D uh, Boys Eastern Main Final, and uh, that'll between Sun be between Central Rustic and Jonesport Fields. Coach Julie Bradstreet. I think one of the things that makes this game so such a good contest, Keith, is that it's very balanced scoring on on either team. You don't know there's no one player you have to stop, and at different times we've seen each of these teams have. Uh, different players come up big in key situations. Story Shaw really uh, nailed a couple threes the other day to get things going, and Walker and Mathers and Brown with some great passes inside. Collier can hit from outside. It's uh, it's all, they're almost like carbon copies of each other in a way. They really are. They really do match up uh, evenly in a way. And these kids, they play each other in, in several sports. They play all the time. They go to camps together in the summer. So uh, as we said, they know what each other is going to do. It's going to come down to the team that executes the best. They seem similar right down to the height uh, heights of the ball players. Allen missing, still a one-point lead though for her team. Angela Allen on for two, and we're tied. Uh, it's an eight-to-six lead now for Southern. Mathers. Four minutes remaining in the first period. Mathers' shot is no good. Rebound tipped high and picked off by Emily Clark. Getting a two-story Shaw, and the Panthers come back down court. Allen starts to drive in, can't get through, gives it back to uh, Allen with it. Good inside, inside position, look at that that time. Posted up very well. Defense came around, great pass in on the inside, and again, she squared up, went to the glass. It's a four-point lead now for the Panthers. Corneal. Mathers starting to go inside, spins, goes to the side of the foul line, puts it up off the rim, and Shaw with a rebound. Erica Shaw to a story Shaw. Erica Shaw had a bunch of rebounds in that semifinal game. Uh, one of the smallest players on the floor, but uh, in the right position as we see Clark travels along the lane. Story Shaw listed at 5 3, Erica Shaw at 5 4. The two. Uh, very good guards. The Central Rustic. Uh, both uh, seniors. They've led the team for a few years now. Joe Mathers to Corneal. Inside the Walker. Back to Corneal. Takes the long one. Two points. Oh, we hit it. Uh, Would have been two. She went up just inside of the three point line. Allen. Inside, lost the way. Mathers has it. Trying to get the ball inside to Bradstreet that time. We talked about the importance of posting up and using your body to seal off the defender. Didn't happen that time. A great follow by Brown. Offensive rebound. 10 to 8. Southern Rustic fights back, and now they've knocked it out. Corneal knocking the ball out of bounds. And the Panthers will maintain possession and play it in. 
Bradstreet up to Clark. Clark coming down along the sideline, looking for someone. There's the pop by Shaw, and a foul on maybe on Bradstreet. I think that's going to be on Clark coming I mean, over Clark. the back. Two two fouls on Clark. So both the big girls, uh, Clark for Central Roostic and Walker for Southern Roostic have playing with two fouls now here in the first quarter. Joe Mathers back with it. Corneal, two minutes remaining in period number one. Deep to main D final. Mathers left-handed shot misses and the rebound Mathers goes right back up and over and now up and in by Walker. Three shots that time by Southern Roostic. Central Roostic's gonna have to block out. And we're tied at 10. And, uh, How many times have we seen that, Keith? Uh, the player gets stopped right past mid-court line, nowhere to go. Try not to pick up the dribble or receive the ball in that position because, as we've said earlier, you can't throw it into the backcourt. Story Shaw to Erica Shaw and Brad Street. There's the pop by Shaw. 12 to 2, Story Shaw, number four. 12, 12 to 10, it's a two point lead, 125 left in the first period. Mathers. Down low to Brown, up and in. Again, that left hand is so effective down low. One of the team leaders of the future, no doubt, for Southern Aroostook, Brown, only a sophomore. Allen stops and pops. What a future they're going to have, Keith. Every one of these kids comes back. Every one of the starters, they have. Uh, they don't have a senior on the roster. It's amazing after already winning the state championship last year to be to be back this year and and uh, probably next year. And having to replace three starters. Again, that's Erica Shaw fighting for the rebound in there. Tied at 12, 40 seconds remaining in the first period. This is Shaw looking inside. Duska Hewitt, number five, is. Uh, in there now. Good coach move uh, by both coaches. They've taken out Walker and Clark. They don't want them picking up that third foul late here in the first period. 25 seconds, tied at 12. And coming in the lineup now is Liz Burton. Number 44, yeah. Holly Mayberry has replaced Walker. Jill Bur uh, Liz Burton. In for Joel and Mathers with 19. I uh, know Mathers still in. Burton number 30. Collier, I think. Two we're coming in for Collier. 5 6 junior. <laughs> Mathers picks up the foul. That's going to be on Erica Shaw pushing along the baseline. They allowed Mathers to go right along the baseline. If you can get a foot on the baseline, it forces them back inside, but they were unable to do it that time and picked up the foul. And as we near the end of the first period, Four team fouls on Southern Aroostook and three on Central Aroostook. The junior Joel Mathers, team leader, picks a three to put her team up by a point. Second shot by Mathers. And the rebound, another foul in the rebounding action. Or somebody stepping in too soon. Looks like a violation. So Mathers will get another shot. Makes it good. 14 to 12. 11 seconds remaining. Central Rooster coming down court and a foul in backcourt on Mathers. Good call for the blocking foul. That'll be their team's fifth team foul, her first. Tough time to pick up a foul with nine seconds on the exactly. clock. Exactly. Allen pops long in the corner and that's that's three. three. And with the first period ending, 15-14, we'll be back in a moment. You're watching Tournament Basketball on Maine Public Television. A couple of, uh, let's see, who, whose uh, fans are those? Uh, Lisa, they it's both like have Central blue. Rustic. Central Rustic. Okay, the purple and White. Central Roostick's the blue and white, right? And uh, Southern well, Roostick's in purple and white. Uh, I'm sorry, you said Central. I'm sorry, I meant Southern. Uh, yeah, I meant Central. 
Keith, this game's living up to, uh, to its expectations. I'm glad to see that. As we said, uh, when you get two quality teams like this, you want them both to play their best, uh, especially from a fan's point of view. You want to see great basketball, and that's what we're seeing here this afternoon. Joe Mathers has it, and uh, we're underway for the second period of this D final. And it's uh, developing into what may be an outstanding contest before it's over. One point lead for Central. And Central Rustic Panthers working around outside. This is strong draw. Ball's thrown away now. It's and Collier, who's back in the lineup, number 10. Gives it to Joe Mathers. Southern Aristics. Dirty Brown has it underneath. Puts it up off no good. Rebound up by Brown again. No good. Rebound tipped high up by Walker this time. Three shots that time. A great inside pass by Mathers. Brown worked hard. Got two uh, offensive boards, and then it was uh, Walker finally putting it in. And comes right back to Bradstreet. She works on the offensive boards. Good successive rebounds on both ends of the court to make it 17-16. That lead now held by a central Rustic. Collier with it, number 10, guarded by Allen. In the corner of Mathers, inside the Walker, spins, puts it up, ball on Bradstreet. Rebound is up and in by Mathers. She sneaked in there, picked it up, and put it back. She sure did, and then she got bumped by Bradstreet. Good concentration, the ball goes in. She's got a chance for a three-point play. And now central Rustic wants the timeout. Uh, right now, Southern Rustic is winning the battle on the offensive boards. Well, the two, uh, Mathers, who had been outside uh, in the corner, just moved in there and picked it up and put it right back. Somebody missed an assignment there as far as blocking out goes. Uh, we're looking in right now First at uh, Coach Julie Bradstreet talking to her players. Box out, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> First-year coach Julie Bradstreet, who uh, starred at Central Rustic High School and later played at the University of Maine, her first year as a coach of the Panthers. And at the other end, uh, Tom Berry with his purple and white Warriors. The Warriors, the home team, the higher seed, number two in the white uniforms, white and uh, purple. Central A in uh, royal blue and white. I'm sure one of the things that Coach Tom Berry wants to be sure is that uh, his team gets back quickly on defense. Central Rustic, uh, they like to throw that long outlet as we saw the last time down the floor to Bradstreet and uh, they've got some very quick guards so they'll push the ball up on you and you need to make sure you get back on them. And the 5'7", junior guard on the line. Makes it uh, three and it's a 19 to 17 lead for Central Rustic. Shaw down three on two now bounces the ball away in the corner. Passed that one behind Bradstreet that time. Mathers will bring it down. 6.45 in the first half. Mathers comes to the top of the circle. Looks inside, now takes it down. And, uh, she may have drawn a foul. That's going on Erica Shaw. Now they're going to call it on Story Shaw. So that'll be Story's first, team's fifth. Both teams with five team fouls as Clark comes back into the game. Remember, she was out with two fouls, but they're going to need her on the boards right now. Mathers into Walker, spins, bounces one time, puts it up. Rebound Walker, goes right back up. Rebound to Bradstreet. There's that quick pass we were talking about. Colony Clark back to Shaw, guarded by Mathers. In the corner, Allen's jump shot off the rim. Rebound taken down by Southern Aristic, Jody Brown. We're two minutes into the second period. Very evenly matched contest so far. Mathers goes down the lane, hooks it up and off. Rebound, Brown, she puts it up and off. And a foul on the rebound, maybe by Mathers. It was on Mathers. She came over the back of Clark that time. But again, they're getting a couple of shots. Uh, luckily for Central Aroostook, they haven't fallen in, but uh, you can't keep giving Southern Aroostook those opportunities. Pressure coming in by court from Southern Aroostook. Yeah, the, the Panthers bring it up court. Melanie Clark throws it in the fourth court to Shaw. Over to Bradstreet. In the corner, Angela Allen takes a three-point attempt and makes it. 
as we said, you just don't know who it's going to be that you have to stop uh, on either team. So it's great team basketball. Now a one-point lead for Central Arista. Packers. With the ball guarded by Shaw. Spins around, puts it up left-handed, and gets the roll. And her team goes up by a point. So this may establish, uh, I mean, we, we may be seeing a trend here. I mean, teams are pretty even. They're going back and forth, and a foul now on Collier. As I said earlier, I'm just glad to see both teams playing well. Right. Shaw, 5'3", senior, team leader, putting it up and not getting the roll. Rebound up by Clark and not the to go. And Southern Russo comes away with it. Good offensive board that time by Clark. Uh, I, wish, I bet she thinks, wishes she had the ball back on that one because uh, she really wasn't in position to shoot that. And you need to make sure that you take advantage of those offensive boards. That's Corneal coming up with the bucket there. 23-20, Southern Russo. 435 remaining in the first half. Erica Shaw to Melanie Clark at the foul line. Goes on the left side, stolen by Joe Matthews. We've got a two on two at the moment. Cornelius. Great pass. It and there's Brown following it up. 23 20. Angela Allen goes by Collier and puts it up off the rim. Rebound tipped high. Brown trying to start a fast break, but threw it away. And, and the Shaws broke that one up. Number four and 14 together, not came up with a steal. Erica and Story Shaw. Inside, Melanie Clark faking, putting up the shot, and Walker with the rebound. Three forty to go in the first half, 23-20. Jill Mathers with a jump shot from the side of the lane. Bounces high and a rebound by Brown. Blocked by Clark and Clark gets it. Good defense by Clark that time, but she's going to have to do something. She's got the Browns on the inside, got good position. If she boxed out, she could have drawn the foul from Clark that time. Clark at the foul line, guarded by Brown. Long one from the corner by Shaw. Rebound, tipped around, picked up by Bradstreet. I like the way Bradstreet squares up. Uh, she looks like a good young ball player. Chris Bradstreet, a 5-7 sophomore, number 35. 55 to go in the first half. This is Collier going in the lane, putting up the one-hander. Everybody getting involved. Extending the lead now to three. The Southern A. Eric Shaw. Corey Shaw right back with the rudder. Eric Shaw, started by Cornel. Looking for somebody, finds Allen in the lane. That's the roll. The ball kicked out of bounds. Now we'll allow the subs to come in. We've got number 40, Misty Roy coming in. And Mayberry back into the game. Jessica Hewitt in as Bradstreet takes a break for Central Arusta. Roy and Hewitt had good, uh, had played good roles uh, off the bench in the earlier games. In the Semi-final games for both teams as they advance to the final. And now a traveling violation from calling Misty Roy for Southern Aristic. Central comes back now, 217. Erica Shaw, Story Shaw, long three-point attempt is good. Nothing but net. She buried that one. 27, 25, 205 left in the first half. O'Neill with it. To Walker back to Corneal. Nice to go inside. Stolen, but a foul being committed on Allen. Allen went to reach in that time. Foul called on Allen. That's only her first. The next one's going to put uh, both teams in the bonus. Corneal takes the ball out of bounds and throws it away. Somebody zigged when they should have zagged. Looked like it was intended for Roy, but uh, too high. 
And the Panthers get it back. 27 25, they lead. Side now goes back out. Shaw, she's her shot is blocked, but she's fouled by Holly Mayberry, number 44. Shaw's only 5'4", but I don't think anybody's told her that. Uh, she gets in there and does the job rebounding, and she's not afraid to take it inside as she she draws the foul here. They look about the same height, but they list Erica as 5'4", and Story Shaw at 5'3". She's on for two. Their team has a three-point lead, 28-25. Four point lead with 145 remaining in the first half. This is Jill Mathis coming up across the midcourt stripe. She'll set things up here for Kevin Rustic. Walker moves in along the baseline, puts it up, and the rebound. Nice job down. by Hewitt that time. Uh, I don't know if everybody can see that, but she did a nice job boxing out. Clark. Allen in the corner, moves in, fakes, puts up the one hander. Central Rustic really heating up now. Everybody coming in and doing their role. 31, 25, a six-point lead now for Central Aristic. Mathers puts it off the rim, the rebound, back up and off. Mayberry missing. Yeah, Mayberry with a good offensive board that time. Uh, needs to make sure she makes a good second shot. The rest of the shot steps. You know, so often the kids get that offensive board and they're so quick to put it back up that they don't gather themselves and uh, take the sound shot. Clark goes out, Bradstreet back in. 50 seconds remaining in the first half. Corneal, Jody Corneal, guarded by Shaw. This is Mathers. And Collier, 35 seconds. Corneal moves in. Nice crossover. Jump shot from the lane. It's good. Corneal putting on some points uh, in this first half. 37, 20, 31, 27. Allen missing. And let's see if Southern Rosa puts down. And we got a chance to close this lead. Uh, down by four right now. Play for the last shot here with 15 seconds remaining. Down low to Walker. Back out to Corneal. And Bradstreet with a rebound. Five seconds, they're gonna launch one down court. And oh. a foul just for two seconds remaining. That's you hate to see that foul picked up. Mathers picking up that foul. Uh, Tom Barry over this, and that's all right. You know, very sympathetic with this player here. She's got three fouls. I know she feels bad about that one. Two seconds to go in the in the half. You don't want to pick up that third foul. All they had time for was maybe a desperation shot. And, uh, well, they were using the clock pretty well. They Story were, because there, nice was, there, there was two seconds remaining. She would have had time to get off. Good pot, but in any case, no harm done. 31 to 27 at halftime. That and was a, what's turning out to be a really interesting ball game. It was. This has been one of the best matchups of the tournament. Uh, we expected it, and they're living up to it. Thanks very much, Lisa. We are here at courtside with uh, the guru of Aroostook County basketball, as we like to call him, uh, Rennie Klukey from WAGM and Presque Isle, a man who fills us in with information throughout the course of the year. This has got to be a real uh, exciting time for you with an all-county final. Boy, this is great. Both Southern and Central played on the regular season, two great games, uh, and right now the intensity level's jacking up, and with a number of people from the county here, it's, it's just been great. What's the reaction been in Arista County to having Julie Bradstreet to come back and coach in her hometown? Well, I know the people of Mars Hill have been ecstatic about her coming back. They really feel that she's done a great job with the team. Uh, it, it looks like the players have really responded to her. They, they've pulled together, and uh, it's just been an exciting brand of basketball in Mars Hill. Well, speaking of excitement, tonight we'll see Limestone in here, and uh, they have certainly electrified the crowd in the last couple of nights. They've been doing that all year, so it's no surprise to you. Boy, for a while, they've been averaging about 94 points a game, and uh, they'll get up and down the court so quickly. In one run this year, in about 45 seconds, they put 14 points on the board against Fort Kent. Uh, they're, they're exciting to watch. Their fans love to watch them, and uh, Tobin, when he takes a game over, can definitely uh, shine. 
Well, Randy, what do you hear for plans for Limestone uh, with the potential and what looks now pretty certain closing of Loring Air Force Base? Are they going to a downscale or will they even continue to have a high school? They will continue to have a high school. They'll, they'll probably they'll drop down to Class D, of course, because of the uh, number of people that they'll be losing. The girls' team, if they were to close tomorrow, would probably lose, I believe, four or five ball players off it. But they've got uh, some. In girls' Class D basketball, defeating Rangeley in the state game 52 to 49. Last year, returning here, coming in number one with a record of 14 and four on the season, hoping to repeat, but a lot of new players contributing and young players contributing, contributing on both teams. They sure are, as we said. Uh, everybody coming back for Southern Aroostook. A few more veterans on the Central Aroostook side, as the uh, both the Shaws, Angela Allen, and Melanie Clark are all seniors. They are getting a big lift from Chris Bradstreet, who's a 5'7 sophomore. And game underway now with the ball as central is kicked and nope. Angela Allen putting it in. Nobody picked her up that time. Went right through the middle. Six point lead now for the Panthers. Jill Mathers back to the Warriors. In the lane. Back out to Corneal. Side of the foul line. Jump shot. Rebound Melanie Clark to Central Aristic, giving it to Story Shaw. Clark that time did a nice job boxing out, and I'm sure that's one of the things that Central Aristic talked about. Uh, as you said, the shooting percent percentages for Southern Aristic may not have been where they wanted it to, but they were allowed to take more shots because of rebounding. And Central Aristic can't allow them those opportunities. You see Collier picking up a foul here along the baseline. Angela Allen will go to the line for two. First foul on Collier in the ball game. The first team foul in the second half. Third period, 45 seconds old. And our first foul shot of the second half. Angela Allen makes it 34-27. Now it's 35. So Southern Rustic letting Central Rustic build up a bit of a lead here. O'Neill. Seven oh two. Guarded closely by Shaw. Gets it to Brown. Off Brown's foot. She picks it back up, gathers it in, and it's stolen away. Good help by Shaw that time. She started the drive but left the basketball behind. The matching up player to player, but sagging off when possible to help out in the post position. Shaw with it. Inside, Melanie Clark puts it up and in, and now. She's developed that move this year. Uh, she didn't have that last year. Early in the third period, we see Central Rustic is just sending the lead here to 10. We may see it, I mean, uh, Central Rustic extending the lead to 10. We may see a timeout here by, by Southern Rustic. They uh, failed to hit this time down. Again, right there, you saw Bradstreet box out, so Southern Rustic only getting one opportunity on the offensive end. Dory Shaw, Erica Shaw, 6.05 remaining in the period. Allen has it knocked away. <laughs> <laughs> the Shaws run together and they turn the ball over. I think the funniest thing was the expression on both of their faces. This is Wonka with it, has room. Looks in. She thought about it. Brown puts it up and off. And the rebound is right back up and off by Cornell. Five for the rebound. To Shaw. 540. Left in the third period. Over to Shaw. Down the low. Hits Melanie Clark, but Clark loses the ball out of bounds. Couldn't hold on that time. I have the feeling if Central Rustic extends that lead to beyond uh, 10 points, then Tom Berry might want to talk things over here. Well, that's a scary thing. You know, they've got people that can shoot to three, so it can quickly go to 10, from 10 to, yeah. to 13. But Jill Mathers answers the call right there as she goes baseline. She likes to do that. She uh, goes base, baseline, then slithers back through, goes up strong, and uh, she's got a chance for another three-point play. Hewitt coming in now for Melanie Clark. That is Clark's third, uh, third foul. And she, as we said, uh, I think one of the reasons they've got this 10-point lead right now is that they've done a much better job in, in the beginning of this third period on the boards. And with her out, it's going to be uh, Hewitt's 
responsibility to come in and uh, keep the pace in that on the rebounding. Key player for Central District in a bit of foul trouble. The Panthers are leading 37 to 30 now. Bradstreet puts it up and off. Knocked away. And touched out by Central Aroostook. We haven't seen Central Aroostook press much uh, at this point, but we know that they're capable of it. A lot of quick guards. Joe Mathers doing the ball handling right now for the Warriors. Down low. Spinning around, putting it up as Walker and drawing the foul. Good strategy right now by Central uh, Southern Arusta trying to get the ball in down low and see if they can't get uh, foul trouble with Clark and now Bradstreet. She picks up her second. Lead cut down 2-7. Uh, Central Rustic had its biggest lead of the ball game just a few moments ago. A 10-point lead. And now we'll see whether Walker can cut it there. She does. 37-31 Central Rustic. Walker makes it. It doesn't connect. It's Shaw again with a rebound. Lead. Story Shaw across the midcourt stripe to Allen. Starts to go inside, comes back out to Shaw. Look out. Story Shaw's long pop off the rim. Corneal gathers it in to Mathers. Quickly back the other way. Collier goes inside, loses it, picked up by Central Rustic's Broad Street. Mathis got a hand on that, and there's Allen trying to put the ball ahead. Both teams hustling all over the floor right now. Pass was batted pretty high in the air that time, and some turnovers continuing. Mathers inside. Brown shot misses, and Allen with the rebound. I'd like to see him try to use the backboard when they're down low like that. Uh, makes for a higher percentage shot. 3.55 left in the third period. Panthers with the ball. Shaw goes down inside in a crowd and draws the foul. Brown trying to shut off the baseline that time. Picks up the blocking foul. That's going to be going to have a timeout. Uh, Southern Aroostook right now. Two team fouls apiece. And the uh, second foul on uh, Jody Brown in the ball game. Coach Bradstreet. I think she wants them to continue doing pretty much what they are doing. They extended that lead to 10 points. They still lead now by six. And, and as we said, the difference has been in the rebounding department right now. Uh, whereas they had been giving Southern Roostick three and four opportunities at the basket, it's basically been one shot now. Southern Roostick is answering well, though. They're bringing, uh, trying to get the ball in along the baseline, see if they can't draw some fouls underneath, and they've been able to do that the last couple times down. Three forty to seven to go here in the third period. Southern Roostick down by six. Allen will play it in. Angela Allen looking for somebody and may have taken it. She did. Five, second Five seconds. So a turnover to Southern Aroostook. And Mathis brings it down with 341 remaining in the period. Pop by Collier misses. Underneath the basket rolls out of bounds. And they turn it over to the Panthers. Jessica Hewitt, number five, will play it in. Story Shaw. Over to Erica Shaw. Hands it back to her sister. And in the corner to Angela Allen, faking back out to Story Shaw. To Erica Shaw, working it around very good now, looking for the open player. Back to Bradstreet. Shaw is open for the long run. Two. Just inside. 39-41. Southern Roostick really needs to start making some moves right now with Clark out. There's a move by Mathers, partially blocked. Mathers with a rebound, up and off. And a rebound to Allen of the Panthers. They lead by eight. Allen goes down 
for the hard there, but put yourself up. Go with the Shaw. Do Black Street. Oh, nice low. pass. Oh, drop it in. Nice pass. Everybody's concerned about the points, but somebody's got to get him the ball. And that time it was Bradstreet with a great inside pass to Allen. Well, there's a 10 point lead again. Collier tries to answer off the rim. And it's back out to Mathers. Jump shot to the foul line, and she puts it in. Joe Mathers keep keeping the team in it right now. Eight point ball game. Erica Shaw double teamed. Story Shaw now going in the lane. All the way down, hooks it up left-handed. Nine-point lead for Central Aroostook with 155 left to go in the third period. Brown's getting ready to come back in for Southern Aroostook. Joe Mathers. Collier back to Mathers inside, intended for Walker and a foul on Allen. You can see that one coming. Walker used her body very well to seal off Allen. It's going to be a nice entry pass. Allen tried to come over the top to deflect the pass, and she picks up her second foul. One forty-seven left in the third period. Jody Brown will play it in for the Warriors. Looking for somebody, gets it into Walker. Corneal. Corneal goes along the baseline. Can't find nice pass the shot again. passes in. There's a big board right there. Great second effort. Brown wasting no time contributing when she comes in. Corneal had a nice pass along the baseline. Brown missed the first one, but followed it up. She's got a chance for the three-point play. Big hoops here by Mathers and uh, Brown to keep them close. They were down by 10. They came back to within six now. And uh, right now it's a five-point game, 41-36. Minute 35 seconds left in the third period. Shaw. And that's Mathers picking up the foul as Shaw works her way around out front. And that's going to be number four on Mathers, and quickly we're going to see substitution coming into the game. Four team fouls as well, or rather, rather three team fouls. That's going to hurt That's Southern Aroostook right now with her going out with foul trouble. Four fouls. And and she, was re she was replaced, Keith, by Misty Roy. Also in the game now is Joanna Fagioli, a 5'6 junior. Allen holding the ball high and going right to the basket, making it 43-36. Seven-point lead, Corneal for Southern Aroostook right now with the ball. Down inside, Brown goes right to the basket. <laughs> Brown doing a job underneath. It's important when Math is out, somebody's going to have to step up and uh, take on the scoring role. And the 5'9 sophomore is stepping up. Allen with it. Shaw, Allen takes the ball on the line. That's probably two. 43, 45 to 38. 35 seconds. Corneal with it. Coming back, hoping to answer. It's Fagioli with a nice board that time, ran the ball down. Good. Shaw is held up and foul. We'll have to see who, two people trapping right there. We'll have to see who picked up the foul. She wasn't going to wait around to be trapped, so she tried to leap over somebody. I think that Collier picked up number three there. Dusky Hewitt plays it in. Two story Shaw. See if they go for the last one here. With 12 seconds. Shaw with it. Up and in. That's two again. Really is, heating up uh, offensively right now. Is she's right Bristol. near that three-point circle every time, either beyond it or inside of it. And they're doing it with Clark and Bradstreet both on the bench right now. So Central Aroostook really turning things on late in that third period. We'll be back to the Bangor Auditorium in just a moment. You're watching Tournament Basketball on Maine Public Television. Okay, back now at the Bangor Auditorium. Central Aroostook 
on top right now, 47-38 over Southern Aroostook. And the winner will go on to play Rangeley, who has just won the Western Maine D final. Rangeley defeated Valley of Bingham, 37-32. So the winner here will play Rangeley on Thursday night, right here on Maine Public Television at 7 o'clock. All set for the fourth and final period now, going down the home stretch with a nine-point lead for Southern Aroostook, for Central Aroostook. Central has the ball. This is Melanie Clark, and a foul. Central Aroostook had seven uh, for 10 field goals in that quarter to extend their lead, and uh, Allen was four for four in that period. We said they really started heating things up that time. Central Rustic's always been a good outside shooting team through the years. And this year's squad is no exception. Now Bradstreet battles for the ball and traveled that time. She really threw it up without getting set, too. You know? That's one of, you know, a little bit of inexperience there that time. Uh, got possession of the ball and wanted to get away with it, uh, get the shot off quickly, but uh, had she turned around and squared up, she would have had two points. Found herself open in the lane. I don't. I think she didn't think she was going to be open that long, and so she just fired it right back up. Mathers the other way misses, and a foul being called on Allen as Walker picks off the rebound. That's going to be called in the rebounding action, so the basket will not count, but that's going to be important for Southern Aroostook to get the rebounds, try to put up the good second shot. Both teams, even in the foul category, five uh, five team fouls apiece in the second half. Remember, Mather's back in right now. She's playing with four fouls, Keith, but they can't afford to have her on the bench right now. Story Shaw picking up the foul against Cornell. Nine-point lead for Central Aroostook Panthers, the number three team against number one Southern Aroostook, team split on the season. Walker looking for somebody. Mathers puts it up. Gets the rebound, puts it up again. Came rebound tipped high and Clark for the rebound. She's going to have to be careful in the rebounding department. Uh, she had the back position that time. She's going to have to be careful not pick up number five. Story Shaw with it. Backing out. I'm going to work it around here. Time is. Their ally right now, and Allen goes in, puts it up. Sort of an off-balance shot. And the rebound coming down to Southern Arista. Bill Mathers, number 22. Into Brown. Brown goes against Clark. Side of the lane shot misses. Allen with the rebound. Southern uh, Central Arista looking real tough and in command right now. Shaw racing down, loses the ball, picks it up again. Clark to Allen. They can play a more deliberate style right now with the Clark as a friend. Inside, Clark shot is up again. Great inside, off pass. Story shot, got it in. It's the biggest lead they've had right now. An 11 point lead with 5.58 remaining in the ball game. Inside, a Walker. nice pass from Walker to Brown. hanging tough right now, but they're going to need to make a run here. The lead is Shorter. nine. This is Clark. Shaw. Good. Boy, she is. The way Central Aroostook is shooting right now, it's going to be tough coming back on them. Everybody seems to have the hot hand. It's putting a, hit, hitting a pretty high percentage in this uh, second half. Allen with another rebound. Shaw racing down court again. And she'll pull it out smartly. Allen inside to Clark, goes in the lane to Bradstreet, back out to Erica Shaw. Allen's open, long, three oh, points. They are on fire, Keith. I guess. Both Allen and Shaw are just uh, burning up the net. 54 to 40. Mathers, shot by Corneal is off. Everything's starting to go uh, Central's way right now. 
They're on fire in shots that usually Southern Aroostook is making. Just not going in. Inside to Clark. Clark goes in along the baseline, thinks better of trying to get through. They're forcing it. And knocked out of bounds. The Warriors will get it back. Timeout. Uh, Coach Tom Barry wants a timeout here. Down by 14 with 429. Hoping that maybe a timeout will cool off this hot Central Aroostook team right now. They'll do something to slow that momentum. Wow, they're, they were really heating up. You know, as we said, it's not just one player. Everybody is doing it on both ends right now for Central Aroostook. As we look into their huddle right now. Coach Bradstreet has got to be impressed uh, with the shooting of Shaw and Allen. We don't think they've missed for some time. Well, they're doing a great job, and, and, and if they're not doing that, they're making the good inside passes, and you've got uh, everybody contributing right now, making it very difficult. The other thing they're doing is they're not really forcing anything That's at right. this point. They're playing pretty smart. Bellamy Clark is playing that way. She hasn't, you know, she's had, she's looked inside and started to go and then stopped immediately when she sees that uh, there's no sense forcing it, coming back out. And uh, usually uh, Allen or Shaw are open, and they've popped them from deep and in a couple cases three points. So let's see what the Warriors can come up with to get back in here and tighten things a bit. Down by 14. Mathers Cornell three point attempt. Good rebound board. Walker puts it up and off. Rebound Walker tipped away knocked away and she's fouled by Bradstreet. Well that's what they're going to need to do. Uh Keep pounding those offensive boards. Bradstreet's going to pick up uh, either three or four here, I think. Oh, just two. Three. As we see it come up on the clock. But these are going to be important foul shots. They're going to need to score on every possession, especially the way Central Aroostook is scoring right now. The one advantage Southern Aroostook does have at this point is that they're in the uh, bonus situation first. But Walker missing the first of two. Fifty-four to forty-one. Full court pressure now. Story Shaw guarded by Corneal. Corneal got back there in a hurry to prevent the fast break. Erica Shaw, four oh five, Clark. Inside, Allen puts it up and off. Rebound knocked out. A foul maybe on Allen against Walker. A little frustration there. Allen uh, missed what probably should have been two points and tried to get a rebound back. And now we go to the other end. As you said, this will be the advantage for Southern Aroostook right now. They are in the they are in the bonus and they get a chance uh, to score some points without any time coming off the clock. Three minutes, 59 seconds remaining. Shots that usually fall just aren't falling right now for Southern Aroostook. Story Shaw, Erica Shaw. Everything's going well for Central Aroostook. Brads. Clark puts it up and out. Walker back the other way. Got to make something happen here in a hurry with 3.35 remaining in the ball game. Mather stops. Can't get a shot off. Good defense by Central Rustic. Cornell off the glass from deep. 54 43. It's an 11 point game. They're going to bring some pressure now. Jory Shaw. Central Rustic may have to draw. Something to happen here and go for the steal or the foul. Being very patient. Southern Aroostook has a foul to give. Allen. Block shot. Nice block by Mathis right there. The Warriors come back with it. Mathis goes in. It's tipped away. That streak coming from behind that time. And Southern Roostick, I believe, is going to take their final time out. 2.45 and down by 11. 
we'll see what Coach Tom Barry comes up with. Right now, Central Aroostook definitely in the driver's seat. Uh, we see them being very patient on offense, eating so some clock up and only taking uh, smart shots. Southern Aroostook does have one foul to give here, and they'll probably have to go for the steal more often. Yeah, I think you're going to see him coming right out, getting uh, right in the face of the offensive player. All the, fresh, all the pressure they can give for the final two minutes and 45 seconds. Obviously not out of reach, but Central Aroostook is really in command and has been throughout the final period. You know, Southern, Southern Aroostook has been doing a good job uh, They've been getting their shots off the board, but uh, they just haven't been falling in for them here in this fourth period. Central Aroostook led at halftime, 31 to 27. At the end of the third period, it was 47 to 38. And now here they have an 11 point lead, 54 to 43, as we begin the final two minutes and 45 seconds. Mathers goes up, doesn't Again. get the basket. Rebound up, no good. And knocked around, picked up by Shaw. Bradstreet, here's the pressure now from Southern Elizabeth. Story Shaw racing in, putting hooking it up and off. Rebound up by Shaw and taken away by Southern Elizabeth. Mathers, jump shot from the foul line, good. Nine points. Oh, all alone. Allen was in on the fast break. Cornelia is down right now. Fell as it was going, the uh, ball was going down. She's holding on to it. Looks like maybe a wrist. And Coach Tom Berry coming out to take a look. They were coming down the floor and feet pulled up. Uh, Wes Jordan coming out to take a look. Trainer at the University of Maine. Misty Roy going in as both sides of the auditorium giving Janet Corneal a nice round of applause. Misty Roy, number 40, has come off the bench many times during the tournament to give the team a boost. Roy, 5 4 sophomore. Math is with it. All these Southern Holistic players will be back again uh, next year. Foul. In the rebounding action on Southern Aroostook. Brad Street with good inside position. Brad Street will play it in. Look out for the bomb. And to Allen doing it again on the fast break. Puts it up and in. Central Aroostook took him deep that time. Nice pass, inbounds pass by Brad Street. Connected for the touchdown. Inside, Brown spins, shot is blocked, almost stolen, tipped around, balls out of bounds. And Jody Brown will play it in for the Warriors with 1.28 remaining. Collier can't get through, puts it up and off the glass, under the basket. Grant Street with it. Shaw guarded closely by Walker. Comes in the forecourt to Allen. Look for them to pull it out a little bit more. Central Aroostook fans realizing uh, an Eastern Maine championship. Just moments away. And a foul by Misty Roy. Centralistic really uh, has come through a great team effort in what looks to be uh, winning this Eastern Maine Championship. The really the difference in the game, Keith, Central Aroostook just was on fire and Southern Aroostook went stone cold. That's right, it was an even match for the first half and as you say, Central Aroostook just couldn't miss for a long stretch right into the, uh, from, from the, uh, third period, about midway through the third period, right into the fourth period. They really were burning up the net. 
Scully Shaw was among those who couldn't miss for a while. Angela Allen. Now it's a 15-point lead. Mathers foul line jump shot. Misses. Rebound Clark. To Shaw. Now they're on a fast break again. This is Erica Allen putting it up there. Erica Shaw. Shaw. Shaw to Shaw. That's a great uh, bounce pass from Story to Erica. Brown with it. Rebound. See, there's, a, there's a difference right there, Keith. Those short shots, Southern Roostick usually makes those shots, and they've just gone cold here in this final minute. Bradstreet. Still playing their hearts out, trying to stay in the game, but the ball's just not going in for them. Bradstreet following Misty Roy that time. 62 to 45, and in 27 seconds, uh, Central Roostick will be awarded the Eastern Maine Class D Championship. And they'll be going on to play Rangeley. Again, Rangeley has won it over in Western Maine. And we'll have that for you on Maine Public Television Thursday night at 7. Central Roosevelt last won the Eastern Maine Championship in uh, 1990. They lost the state game that year to Buckfield, 48 to 39. Shaw with it. 14 seconds, Erica Shaw, Story Shaw. Crowd, uh, the fans are counting down. Mathers is up on a fast break. Right with it. To Walker, fast break, and a good, a little count. But it's all over in Central Roostick is the Eastern Maine champ, 62 to 47. I wouldn't want to be on the bottom of that pile right now, Keith. Very happy Central Aroostook team and cheerleaders. Story Shaw and Erica Shaw right on the bottom. And they'll go up to, uh, to do the nets. Melanie Clark on one end right now and Angela Allen waiting to go up on the other end. 